announcements for this week. In preparation for Christmas, everyone is invited to our parish reconciliation service this Thursday, December the 16th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We'll have four priests available for confessions. There will be an additional opportunity for confession on Tuesday, December 21st, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Our parish pastoral council is seeking new members. If you would like to assist in our parish's discernment of mission and in helping lead our many activities, you're invited to join us. The meeting minutes for the pastoral council are posted on bulletin boards around the church to help all parishioners learn more about this important ministry. If you are interested, please speak with Father Jantz or Deacon David. We're happy to announce that we will once again be hosting a children's program at the beginning of the 4 p.m. Mass on Christmas Eve. Students from the first through the sixth grade are invited to participate. If your family would like to be involved, please see the announcement in this week's bulletin for details. Thank you.
Hello, good evening, and welcome to St. Thomas. Tonight we're celebrating the liturgy for the third Sunday in Advent. And if you would, check your phones and put them off or vibrate, something like that. <clears throat> Our readings tonight are going to be at that top number on the board, number 866. The psalm will be there also. Tonight, our celebrant is Father Cook, and he's being assisted by Deacon David. Let's stand and sing our gathering song, number 288, Ready the Way, and we're going to sing verse 1, 2, and 3. Ready the Way. Ready the way of the Lord. Ready the way of the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness. Ready the way of the Lord. Let fear is your God. Coming with your vindication. Look and behold the saving power of God. Let every valley be filled. Let every valley be filled. Let every mountain be Good evening. And once again, we gather to celebrate our God's presence among us, beginning this liturgy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first acknowledge that we are sinners and give thanks that ours is the God of mercy. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. 
He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them by saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Do y'all know why the deacon and I are wearing pink tonight? Do you? <laughs> Same reason we have a pink candle. <laughs> uh, excuse me, the macho men in the church call this rose. Uh, it's supposed to be a sign of joy. We're in the midst of a very serious penitential season that of Advent, but as we prepare for Christmas, mindful of our imperfections, our need to at least to some extent change our ways, uh, the church knows that that can, if we reflect too much 
on our unworthiness, on our sinfulness, if we focus on that unreservedly, they can be unhealthy. And so the church interjects this moment of joy in the middle of this penitential season as a reminder that it's not at all in vain. Not at all. In our first reading today, Zephaniah the prophet, at a time when the Jewish people were experiencing some serious difficulties, proclaimed, hey, be happy, rejoice. The kingdom of God is among you. <clears throat> you know, nobody has a God like we do. In our second reading, St. Paul sets the theme. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say it, rejoice. To underscore the importance of this message from Paul, it's important to realize that he's writing it from jail. He's in prison because of his faith. Writing this letter of encouragement to people on the outside, the Philippians, who, sure, are suffering somewhat for their faith. They're paying the price of, of faithfulness. But he reminds them that we, whatever we're going through, God's in charge. Everything's going to be all right as long as we belong to God. <laughs> and the best thing we can do in our lives to bring us joy, peace, and real happiness is to live our lives the way God wants us to. Since, since my youth, I've always kind of imagined John the Baptizer as one of these fire and brimstone type preachers. And indeed, in the record, of the Gospels. We have accounts of him taking to serious task those who were high and mighty and lording it over others and using their positions for personal gain and power and whose compliance with the law was very much for show. And so I've always kind of, in my mind, pictured John as really taking folks to tasks. And he does on occasions. But in this, today's gospel, we hear that John is preaching the good news. It's the kingdom of God that's coming upon us. Get ready for it. That is... It almost presumes that you're already a faithful believer. But it's time to really clean house and make sure everything's in order. Now, it's true that in today's gospel, uh, first of all, notice that people say, okay, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? They're happy. They're not being condemned. He's not saying you're all going to hell unless you... Let me baptize you. No, he's preaching that the kingdom of God is on the verge of being in their presence. Where the promises of God are about to be fulfilled. So they're excited. They said, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? And he says, well, be charitable. If you've got an extra cloak, Give it to somebody who doesn't have one. If you've got more than enough food, share with those who need it. In other words, be good people. Act like God's people. Now, we also know that uh, there's some specific examples. Uh, some soldiers came up and said, what should we do? 
parenthetically, I'd like to point out that in the Roman Empire, they typically would conscript soldiers from one part of the empire, but then would send them to another part of the empire where they were needed not only for battle, but sometimes to administer Roman justice. Uh, so normally the occupying soldiers would not, they would be of a different race or ethnicity, different culture. But some of them heard John the Baptist's message. They said, what should we do? He says, well, do your job, but don't lord it over people. You know, and be satisfied with your pay. Do your duty. Uh, even some tax collectors. And again, unique to the Roman system, uh, when the government levied taxes, you weren't expected to fill out the form yourself and send it in. Uh, they had tax collectors that came around, told you how much you owed, uh, and collected it. As you can well imagine, the rich and the powerful, those with influence and with an end, well, they didn't get leaned on too heavily by tax collectors. They weren't rich and powerful themselves for the most part, but they did have a detachment of Roman soldiers to make sure they could collect what was due. But you can sense their salary, if you want to call it that, came from whatever they collected over and above what was required. They really leaned on those they could lean upon. Or at least most of them did. That was what was so valuable about their position. But even some of those got caught up with John the Baptizer's message. Not out of fear, remember, but in joy. Because his, he basically is proclaiming the good news. That's what should we do? And he says, yeah, be fair. Do your job, but be fair. Don't milk people. It is important for us, no matter how seriously we are preparing for the celebration of Christmas. And a lot of people find it somewhat stressful this time of the year. Getting the house ready, Christmas cards, buying presents, Christmas dinner, some traveling. There's all kinds of stuff that can come into play. I've heard more than one person say they prefer Thanksgiving. Good food, you don't have to worry about buying presents. But Christmas truly is a wonderful celebration of God coming among us as one of us, worthy of real joy and excitement. That's the context in which we recognize our faults and failures, our imperfections, and once again, commit ourselves to getting back on the road, to becoming more and more faithful followers, and thus more joyful celebrants of God's kingdom's presence in our midst. Please stand as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we continue our Advent preparations to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us remember John the Baptizer's call for a new baptism by the Holy Spirit as we pray for the needs of our community and indeed the whole world. Our prayer response tonight is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Reka, bishops, priests, deacons, and all who minister to the church, that they may be heralds of God's presence among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For all nations and peoples of the world, that they may confidently and courageously seek the peace of God in every human endeavor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the upcoming synod in our diocese and across the entire church, that Pope Francis, all bishops, clergy, and the church faithful will be inspired by the Holy Spirit during the discernment process, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the entire St. Thomas Parish community, that generosity and compassion may be the center of our Advent preparations for the coming of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, the men and women of the armed forces, and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the happy repose of the soul of Vinzine Vitrano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of our beloved dead, that they may share in the glory of Jesus' resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Help us to allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and our world, to always follow the path of holiness in doing your will for others. We make this in all our prayers through Christ the Lord. Amen. As we bring our gifts forward, we'll sing number 484, O Most Holy One, number 484, verse 1 and 2. My sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, 
our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, together with all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, we bless you, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over. You, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son 
and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles, and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Together we pray now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who have been invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my world, but all of the world, my soul shall be lost.
Let us pray. O Lord, we implore your mercy that this divine that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. We make this prayer through Christ the Lord. Amen. Do it now. He keeps me straight. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. <laughs> May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and stay with us forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are sent forth singing number 279, O Come, Divine Messiah, number 279, and we'll sing verse 1 and 3, 1 and 3. O come.